What's going on guys, it's Kyle here and today we're going to talk about five reasons why I love investing in real estate. Number five is probably my favorite so stick around for that one. I just uh, I just had a big win with this one recently. But before we get into the video, I just wanted to tell you guys a pretty big goal that I have. Um, I don't know if we're going to hit it or not, but I'm going to try to hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube before the end of the year. So um, I'm currently at like 1,300, so I got a long ways to go, but I think it might be possible. So that being said, let's jump into the video. All right, guys, so as you know, there's a lot of different ways you can invest your money, and there's advertisements for just about every investment trying to get your attention and uh, get your money. Uh, but I'm going to give you five reasons why I love real estate, and number one is cash flow. So first, before we talk about cash flow, let's, let's talk about some of the other investments that you might make. Maybe you're going to buy precious metals like silver or gold. Um, maybe you're just going to buy into the stock market. You're going to buy a share of Apple or Tesla. Or potentially you're going to actually partner with someone and you're going to uh, give them money to start a business. So you, maybe you own a portion of that business and you're hoping that it takes off and your investment in that business grows. Uh, real estate has multiple different ways you can make money. And like I said, we're gonna talk about cash flow first. Now, if you don't know what cash flow is, simply it is the income that you generate off that property minus all of the expenses. So like your mortgage, your insurance, your taxes, your repair and maintenance, um, all those things. So after you subtract all those expenses out of the income, the money that you have left over at the end of the month is the cash flow. And obviously when we buy real estate, we're running our numbers to make sure that our cash flow is gonna be positive. So every single month, after all of our expenses are paid, we're actually putting money into our pockets. All right guys, number two is appreciation. Now if you don't know what appreciation is, it's more or less the increase in value of something. So as you know, things in the world don't usually get cheaper, they continue to appreciate. Now there's obviously a lot of things going on behind the scenes on why this is happening. We're not gonna get into that in this video. But uh, really, if you look at the national average, uh, homes in the US appreciate somewhere around three to 5% a year. Now obviously that's gonna depend on what area of the country you are. Let's say you're living in Austin, Texas. Your home is probably appreciating a lot faster because you've got a lot of people moving there, you've got a lot of new business and a lot of exciting things going on where maybe somewhere like uh, Chicago, Illinois, um, maybe there's a lot of people leaving that state because you know of high taxes and, and other things. So maybe your home is more flatlining or just appreciating at a smaller rate than somewhere like Austin, Texas. So we're gonna break appreciation down into two categories. We're gonna talk about natural appreciation and forced appreciation. So we already talked about natural appreciation, which is just things continue to go up um, over time. At least that's the way it's always been. Uh, but then forced appreciation is when you go and buy a piece of property, maybe it needs some love, maybe the last owner didn't take care of it, and what you're gonna do is you're going to you know, take money, you're gonna invest it into that property, maybe you're gonna paint it, you're gonna put new flooring in, uh, maybe you're actually going to increase rents a little bit, decrease some of the expenses, and by doing this, you're increasing the value, you're forcing it yourself. So after you're done doing that, you get a re, you know, the property reappraised and suddenly you've created $50,000 of value just by you know, doing some work to the property. So that's what we call forced appreciation. Number three is principal pay down or loan pay down or mortgage pay down, whatever you wanna say, debt pay down. But essentially it is just the fact that your tenant is paying off your debt for you. So when you go buy this property, you're gonna to go to the bank and you're gonna get a loan and uh, maybe your mortgage payment is 600 bucks a month. Well, hey, your tenant is paying you $1,200 a month to rent from you. So every single month, it's not like you are bringing forth the cash to pay off that uh, piece of property, your tenant is for you. So that is one of the greatest things about real estate is the fact that you're not actually paying it off yourself, the tenant is. Now, if you went and bought a piece of silver or you went and bought an Apple stock or Tesla stock, uh, most likely someone else is not gonna pay that for you. 
both real estate, someone else is paying it for you. All right, number four is tax advantages. Now, obviously I am not a CPA or an accountant and really have no clue what I'm talking about when it comes to tax advantages. Um, but there's things like depreciation and the 1031 exchange that really benefits you uh, when you're investing in real estate. So for example, the 1031 exchange, if you were to buy a piece of property and you decide to sell it, you're gonna have to pay capital gains tax on that. However, with the 1031 exchange rules, you can actually go find a like kind property of greater value um, and you can go buy that property and you actually can defer the capital gains tax until a later date. So there's a lot of investors, um, you might know someone like Ben Mala who buys a lot of big apartment buildings and hotels who just keeps deferring his taxes um, and uh, it's a great way that you can build up your rental portfolio without paying a ton of taxes. So the government really gives us a lot of incentives to invest in real estate we just have to work with our accountants and our CPAs to figure out you know, how it best suits us. So again, I'm not gonna get into anything further with that because quite frankly, I'll start you know, making stuff up. So anyways, that was number four. All right, for those of you who have stuck around this long, thank you. Number five is my favorite and it is called equity capture or I guess that's what I call it. So this is essentially when you go out and you find a piece of property and you buy it for an incredible discount. So I've done this multiple times where maybe I purchased a property at an auction or maybe I just bought it from a mom and pop who were just sick of dealing with it and they decided to just sell it to me for you know the price that I offered them. Um, so a real world example of this is the 12 unit that I just bought. So I bought it for $345,000 and on day one, it appraised for $465,000 without me doing any work. I didn't have to force appreciation to it I didn't have to decrease the expenses or increase the rents, anything like that. I simply purchased the property at such a great deal that on day one, I had over $100,000 of equity in the property. So this is something that uh, you probably would have a very hard time doing in any other investment class. You're probably not gonna go find gold um, and buy it for you know pennies on the dollar. It's probably not gonna happen. But what you can do is get really good at finding off-market real estate deals um, and, and trying to find a, a property that you can purchase with a bunch of equity in it. This is so powerful. So um, I've got a lot of tips on how you can find this. Um, I do direct, direct mail, I call owners, I text owners. Uh, really, the, just the most important thing is staying consistent with reaching out to these owners. And I guarantee you one of these days you're gonna hit a home run. So if you track your net worth like I do, it's super exciting when you find a property that all of a sudden you've created you know, $100,000 of equity pretty much overnight. Now I know I'm gonna get people saying, well, you haven't realized that equity you know, until you sell. That is correct. However, the bank will look at your financial statement and they will see that equity that you have in that property and they may loan against it because they've done that multiple times for me. So that's number five, that's my favorite. All right guys, well hopefully you had some sort of takeaway from this video. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. Again, I'm really hoping to hit this goal of 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. It might be a little ambitious, but we'll find out. So uh, until next time guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.